You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This episode is an interview with Joel Bowman, the managing editor of the Daily Reckoning uh, newsletter. And I just wanted to record this brief introduction to explain that um, I'm actually in Argentina at the moment. And so I'm recording the podcasts on an H4N uh, handy recorder. And unfortunately, when I did this interview with Joel, there were some technical problems. The recording cuts out um, every sort of 30 seconds or so. We miss a word and it sounds like it's been edited together or censored or something very strangely it actually it hasn't been edited at all um except for when the uh the drinks arrived and i cut that pause but unfortunately uh there are some audio quality problems i still um would like to put this episode out because i think what joel has to say is really interesting so sorry about the uh audio quality i don't know if that's to do with the fact that we were in the sunshine or the battery was getting a bit low or maybe there's a problem with my SD card. But anyway, I think you can still get a general sense of the interview. Uh, so I hope you enjoy the interview very much and thanks so much for listening. I'm recording this episode in a lovely bar in the Palermo area of uh, Buenos Aires. And I'm very pleased to have a managing editor of The Daily Reckoning, uh, Joel Bowman. Hi, Joel. Hi, Jake. Kind of you to have me on. Thanks. Thanks so much for joining me. So I'm, I'm really pleased to be able to talk to you because um, I'm down here um, with my partner, Buenos Aires, um, but also to, to see um, if I can get a better understanding of what life is, here is like. Um, we're traveling around South America and looking at uh, what it might be like to live in South America for the longer term. And so I'm re- your thoughts, because you've been here for a couple of years. Is that right? Uh, yeah, I moved here with my partner a couple of years ago. Um, you know, as you can see, it's not a particularly stressful existence here. It's, it mostly consists of um, and um, very flexible work schedules, um, especially for those of us like yourself, Jake, who who choose to work on the internet. And um, you had a great term before. I think it was geographically independent. Yeah, location independent. Location independent. Yeah, that's right. So. <clears throat> um, uh, down here and in other parts of South America that are, you know, interested in something other than an, a one-hour commute to work every day and uh, a rigid kind of schedule and lifestyle. Awesome. Well, just to start off, it'd be really interesting um, for people to hear a little bit about your background and the work that you do um, for the Daily Reckoning. Right. Okay. Um. Well, I financial, which is a. Uh, uh, an independent LLC that operates under the Agora Inc. Um, umbrella, I guess. Um, I think that was probably about seven years ago. Um, I started work with Eric Fry on a e-letter publication called The Root Awakening, uh, uh, kind of a morning edition of Bill Bonner and Addison Wiggins' Daily Reckoning. Um, so I worked on that with, with Eric Fry in, in New York City. Uh, we worked on a, an office in, in Broad Street and we, <laughs> Eric being a, a native California, used to kind of, I think we were the only people in that sort of downtown area that got around in flip-flops and board shorts and the, we jokingly refer to it as the, the Laguna form. <laughs> um, and so we were, we were up there for about a year sort of uh, playing our trade and thought about, um, about his sort of take on the markets um, <clears throat> and from a what I guess would historically be called a, a contrarian perspective. Um, and I spent a lot of the time learning uh, both from er- uh, publishers and editors at Agro Financial more about a sort of libertarian philosophy which underpins a lot of the uh, publications that we have at Agora. Um, right, so is that, um, did you, when you got that job, you know, did you already, had you already in- um, sort of the, maybe the kind of Austrian economics approach and stuff? Or? Uh, not really. Uh, before that, actually, I spent uh, <laughs> I spent some time informally investigating uh, free markets, and by that I mean uh, 
sort of at a gypsy gypsy man um, you know in in black market areas of, of the economy or what it dysphemistically called black market areas of the economy uh, both in the states and in the UK uh, but as far as formal uh, education no not it was very much a hands-on uh, um, uh, learning curve <clears throat> excellent excellent and I, I think that was um, you know that's something that that the culture of Agora uh, 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 hopes to, to nurture I mean we have a uh, one outfit, uh, Laissez Faire Books, um, the name of which kind of speaks for itself. Uh, that's more or less um, of Agora. You know, it's, it's, it, we have writers that are kind of scattered all over the place, all over the US, all over the world that s stick more or less to their own schedules. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's not, uh, it's not a, a typical uh, work. Now, when it comes to um your choice to live here I'm, I'm really interested because you, you don't need to be in BA for your work as you said your location independent so what what led you to choose this as your choice of place to live and steak <laughs> awesome <laughs> well, were the, the previous to this uh, I lived with uh, my fiance my now fiance in uh, New York California Scotland uh, Dubai Taiwan I'd, uh, steak and wine at a at a price that compares to the quality that you can get here in in Argentina. So, uh, you know, aside from the kind of you know the climate and the very relaxed sort of lifestyle, uh, that was something we're, that we're really looking forward to. Especially after the middle and um, have their own att attractions and appeals, but um, you know you don't move to Dubai for the for the vineyards. Right, right. Now that it's really interesting to hear about. You know, I can certainly see those are here. Very urbane place. I've been really impressed by su such a nice street life. You know, lots of cafes and so forth. However, we have experienced arriving here in BA in the middle of what seems to be some really significant like, inflation is estimated at 25%. And um, there's this difference between the official exchange rate to the dollar of about 4.7 and then kind of free market rate which is about 6.2 so could you give you know a very you, your your take on you know what oh, I don't think it, <laughs> I don't think anybody really knows what's going on uh, you know which is part of what keeps it uh, exciting for uh, I guess want of a better word the the two data points that you mentioned there are, are interesting because uh, if you're uh, managing of your budget you can use one to cancel out the other to, to an extent that, that may that may change as circumstances change uh, going forward, but for the moment, as, as you say, you're quite correct that the, although the official uh, inflation rate by those in the Congreso is something around the vicinity of 9% or, or under, to under 10%, the unofficial is, every, you know, everyone knows on the street that it's 25, 30%, in some cases higher for, uh, but you needn't subject yourself to the, the official exchange rate here. What many people do is have a, a bank account offshore. Most uh, Argentines who take that route choose to bank in Uruguay, uh, the Switzerland of the state, and simply go over for maybe a long lunch in uh, Montevideo or Colonia or Punta Leste and walk back what is currently a, a legal amount less than 10,000 US dollars and then simply go to the, at the exchange that um, you know that is a, that is a lot more honest than the 4.7 percent. So you can really sort of give yourself a 25, maybe 30 percent cost of living raise. Um, you know if you can avail yourself of that. So is it the case signs in the know are able to basically hack the system and kind of get on? Um, I presume that for really poor people, those kind of options are a lot more difficult to do, which I imagine means that what actually means probably the poorest that get most hit by this kind of policy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, inflation is the is the poor tax. Uh, it, you don't don't worry about the super rich. They'll you know they'll be fine. They'll always find a, a workaround to the system. Uh, in many cases, the the, the middle class will will do likewise. But it's the greatest impact of inflation is on the people that that don't have you know never mind the the ferry or the or the plane flight over to Uruguay for a foreign bank account but but 
you know, money for the next meal. So, you know, it's, it's inflationist policies are really, really hitting the hardest. Right, right. And uh, now, is this... I, I get the sense this may be a very, very um, rough approximation of the, the history, but I understand that what's going on now here, sort of leftward drift um, in economic policy since the default um, of the peso against it was pegged to the dollar in around t- uh, 2000 it defaulted again I could be getting the details wrong but could you give a very like what how this has come to pass well you, you're right in that it does seem that that uh, Argentina follows a, a reasonably short sort of 10 year cycle uh, the early 90s going full of tumult and uh, and many currencies coming to replace one another in short succession and then uh, obviously at the beginning of the last decade we had many presidents coming to replace one another in quick succession along with um, the eventual default. Um, I think we're getting to more or less that that point again where we reach very unsustainable trajectory. I mean, you can't go on with 25-30% inflation for very long before it takes off. Uh, Basically into hyperinflation? Well, I, I don't know if it'll go into hyperinflation. Uh, you, certainly they have a history of, um, of letting it run away. Um, so, yeah, maybe hyperinflation in, in the not-too-distant future or very, very serious structural changes. The, the will for which... To, to, you know, doesn't seem to doesn't seem to be in place. Although there are some huge pros, uh, protests on the streets right now, the Casa de Lazos that they call them when they get out, and you know there is some unrest uh, happening. But I don't know, you know, to say how close we are to an- another enormous breakdown is anyone's guess. Right. And the other thing I guess is that it seems to me that <clears throat> I don't know whether or not the the culture is really whether there is a significantly pro-enterprise culture, it seems to me that people are upset with the government but they're still very much um, statist in their outlook. Is that is that like my impressions walking around? It's loads of pictures of Ava Perón and um, Che Guevara and, and there seems to be quite a kind of interest in well, a, a belief in the state and in government solutions here in the culture. Is that is that the case? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that you can see the the belief in government solutions manifests itself in the uh, spread of government problems. I mean, the, the people here, they, you know, the universities are, are t- generally typically uh, left leaning or you know, leaning, um, which I think is a is a better distinction. Um, and you know, I mean, re-electing the same people over and over again, expecting different results, it's. I think there's a there's a huge lesson to be learned for people in the United States uh, that that Argentina can teach them, um, it, and, and by that I mean the kind of problems that occur and then reoccur in Argentina as the result of people who you think can make your life freer uh, by you know or choosing left or right or a sort of meaningless election uh, circuses. Um, you know, people in the people in the West would do very well to have a look at how that's worked out or not for Argentina. Right, absolutely. People listening to this will be that the kind of capital controls and inflation that we see here. I think you know a lot of people are expecting we may well see that in uh, in the UK, in the US, in Europe. Um, in the interesting thing is that in hearing you talk about living here, I guess. What I'm hearing is that, you know, if you are enterprising and so forth, you can basically just get around these issues and, and get on with life. Is that the way you feel? Or would, looking now at the way things talking, if you had friends who were thinking about making the move here, is it something that you would say they should really think carefully before doing so? Or what, what is your view on what it's like to, to live here? Uh, well, I think one would be an expat here and what it's like to have grown up in Argentina to have been born here um, I myself am, am Australian and I, I would have to think very very seriously before moving to Australia and setting up a permanent residence there um, a, a good friend publishing industry likes to say that um, you know you want to be treated like a guest when when you go somewhere you don't want to be treated like a tax slave 
And essentially, what most of these governments around the world have in their, within their borders are a bunch of tax slaves. And it's very, very difficult. It's a, a free life while you exist, you know, in, within the borders uh, where you first receive your tax branding. Um, so th there is a distinction between the, the kind of life that the people, that, that Argentines, uh, that's available to expats. Um, it, in saying that, um, I, th I think it's a, it's a very good place to, you know, park your suitcase for six months of the year. The, the winter's terrible. I wouldn't be here for the winter. The, the Argentine people are seasonally affected individuals I think I've ever met. In the, in the summer, you, you know, you can't find a space in the park. It's, it's a case of bring your own grass. But in the, in the winter, you know, the smallest cloud in the sky or whatever, and, and nobody's going out. All the, but, but for six months of the year, it's definitely a place to, to hang out. Cool. And is there, a, is there an expat community of people who live here of a libertarian mind that, you know, are there people doing that? Obviously, you're here. Are you a lone individual, or would you say? I I do know of others. <laughs> I <can. laughs> um, yeah, I think there's a there's a small uh, community here, but you know, there's interestingly enough, uh, there is a community uh, I've been lucky to to find of local uh, or, or ten years ago wouldn't have wouldn't have known uh, the word, and then through the work of some of the more prominent. Uh, Libertarians, uh, usually in the states, uh, I'm thinking of, for example, uh, Ron Paul. Uh, even though he is a politician, um, people around the world about the message of liberty and sound money, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, Stefan Molyneux in Canada. I think Jeffrey Tucker is doing a great job with Laissez Faire Books. Doug Casey and, and the Casey Research Group. You know, there's a, the that this generation has to educate themselves, and I think with the advent of mass inf information distribution through the internet you know you're finding people in Argentina a, an enormously status country that mm. are even themselves choosing ways to enjoy a free life for themselves I have heard that also from Doug Casey about Argentina that you know the experience of having the sort of currency de debased so many times and such uh, sort of in a sense obvious political um, that that there, he's talked about the fact that there is kind of a culture of informal anarchism here, you know, maybe not sort of necessarily um, in touch with a lot of the writings of those things, but people just don't, basically don't trust the government. Uh, and it seems like the Peron, Peronist kind of legacy of statism here at the same time. Yeah, it's, it, you know, it's brought into very, very high relief the, the division between these two uh, between these two mentalities in a country like Argentina where you have minds have kind of been through the sausage machine of, of state education and they're told that you know the, the next person to occupy the Casa Rosada will have all of the answers and it'll be you know choripan para todos and football para todos and everybody will everybody's lot will be somehow magic and juxtaposed uh, very obviously to to that group is those that um you know, those that have kind of been squeezed out of that uh, mentality or managed to squeeze themselves out of that mentality and um, obviously what, um, you know, what we would call the gun in the room. Yeah. Um, and, you know, once once you see that and you see the, the violence and aggression that the, that the state subjects uh, its citizens to, it's very, very difficult to look away. It's very, very difficult once you know that, you know, your, ta your vote is going to validate this system. It's very, very different, very, very difficult to continue being complicit in that kind of um, in that kind of environment and I think a lot of people and a growing uh, number of people particularly young people are coming to that realization here and moving right. away from the status doctrine under which they labored for for so long right another question that I wanted to ask you is uh, as a again because I'm interested in expat life here just in terms of the practicalities of dealing with you know visa experienced Argentina as being an easy place to spend time here and you know is it is it a major hassle or is it just one of those things that once you learn the system you can work out pretty easily how to stay here and stuff um, I would say that Argentina's government are uh, admirably ineffective uh, in, in many areas of their um, of their in many of their activities so you know it's not the kind of place where in the United States for example Australia certainly 
where you know you get a stamp on your passport when you come in and you know that's the law you either obey this or we're going to you know ship you down to Guantanamo or you're going to yeah. get put on some you know some list and thrown into a dark hole somewhere Argentine state is you know that it's it's for aside from uh, collecting taxes and uh, making promises they can't keep them they're, they're more or less um, fairly impotent when it when it comes to um, you know when it comes to terror or something like that right right At yeah I, I, so far now that I mentioned that I'm probably gonna be kicked out tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> I did notice that um, we were we had a form to fill in on arriving we were supposed to declare what type of mobile phone we had and everything right. there was nobody to it it's yeah. kind of it seems like the the rules are there but um, but you know there we go it's not only that there's no man behind the curtain I mean they can't really even afford a curtain it's <laughs> right. you know it's it, I mean you can really see what, what goes on here I had a friend at a little while ago who came in um, came into Argentina in the morning and a couple of plane loads of passengers arrived so there was a queue of you know five or six hundred uh, people waiting to go through to be funneled through the you know the customs lines and and there was maybe two of the ten lines were open and everyone was kind of um, hemming and was going to rush the gates and 500 people just decided to you know hey there's two of them there's 500 <laughs> of us you know do the math so so that's just went through. that's not uncommon here. Right. That kind of that kind of mentality, right. um, and you know that's to to control what it, what it hopes to control the mov yeah. the movement of people. Um, so you know those those stories are encouraging. I find. Yeah, <laughs> I wonder what your thoughts are. Some people talk about Chile as the new dynamic economy in South America. Obviously, it scores a lot higher on some of these surveys of economic freedom. If you want to be an entrepreneur and so forth. On the other hand. I do understand the argument that, well, you may have a lot of regulations here, but if they're not really uh, enforced, rather, then it kind of doesn't necessarily make that much difference. So do you, looking at um, South America as a place to come and live, if you're kind of an entrepreneurial type, what, what do you think about um, Argentina versus Chile or anywhere else? I have uh, a lot of friends down here and, and colleagues that have been making a very very good argument for for Chile uh, recently both as far as as advancing a, a free uh, a free lifestyle uh, as far as economic there and also a, a growing community which is important of of I don't like to use the word like like-minded but yeah. similarly free yeah. <laughs> similarly free-minded um, individuals uh, which is good for networking purposes and uh, starting businesses and having the kinds that you want to have when starting businesses, which I guess a lot of uh, entrepreneurs or budding entrepreneurs would be looking at as an advantage if they decided to move to South America. Um, yeah, I, d I really don't know. You know, I have to go out and I've been to Chile a couple of times. I'm looking forward to going there. Um, I, I'm heading up to Nicaragua in a couple of weeks where we have... Uh, a conference where Agora Financial is hosting a conference uh, for the Rancho Santana sessions, I think they call it. <laughs> and, you know, we are living in places that really, when you think about it, 10 or 15 years were, you know, absolutely off the map or, or off of most people's radars, uh, at least. Um, I know of other sort of independent uh, communities that are popping up in Salto, mentioned with uh, Doug Casey. Things happening all around the world, and I, I think it's. Uh, somewhat helpful to redefine for yourself in your mind not just where borders exist whether they can be policed or not but also where small communities are, are popping up as we get more and more decentralized becomes more and more decentralized with access to information everywhere we're not going to have to say well you know I'm not going to step my foot over this border or, right, you know right. I, I mean they can't police you know there's just not enough manpower to police every border in the world so eventually the, the jig will be up sustainable community with uh, you know, fertile intellectual, uh, with a fertile intellectual environment and, you know, all the other things that go along with that. Yeah, absolutely. So I guess um, my, uh, it's really about, you know, the, the future for you personally and, and it, how you see uh, yourself in, here in BA. Do you, do you anticipate this as being a place where you'll stay long term or if you're interesting you know, is this somewhere where you'll you'll, or is this more of a? <laughs> um, I don't know. I have to I have to tell you in a, in a, in a couple of, with the benefit of retrospect in a few years. But I think uh, 
I think we're very, very near to a top in the market here if we haven't already reached it as far as real estate values. And so I could see Argentina as going on on sale maybe in a year or, or two from here. Um, and you know that might be that might present some attractive opportunities for people who are looking to set up something more permanent. Self, I would be more of a permanent uh, traveler. So, yes. you know, three months here or six months here, maybe split up with some other trips here and there. But you know, I'm not particularly interested in spending sure. more than a few months. Traveler lifestyle, <laughs> right. awesome. So. Um, for people who are interested in, in your writing and uh, in your work, uh, where can they uh, find out more about uh, about Daily Reckoning and, and what you do? Uh, sure, dot .com um, or agorafinancial.com. Uh, most of our musings are housed uh, there. It's a free e-letter, so you can sign up. And if you don't like it, well, you can't bitch. It comes at the right price. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Joel, thanks so much. Cheers. Thanks, Jake. Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you have feedback about the show, please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com. If you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.